Are you concerned with the current global warming trend, the depletion of the ozone layer, a possible nuclear holocaust, the problem of AIDS, or else just where to put your stuff? Many people have that problem and our researchers have come up with an unbelievable groundbreaking idea. It's called the paper bag, okay? We have one right here. As you can see, it's made of heavy duty paper. It's folded up and glued together real nice. And the purpose of this is to put your stuff in that you don't know what to do with, okay? You can go to the grocery store, take it with you, put your groceries in it, and carry it home with you. Uh, they come in different sizes. You can take a small one, put your kid's lunch in it, have them carry it to school real easy without having to drop a sandwich on the ground or something like that. Excuse me, miss. What? Yeah. You seem to be having some problems here. Ah, oh, it's so hard to carry all these groceries I got. You got all this stuff? Yeah. Yeah. What? Can you just imagine if you had something to put that in? Wouldn't what? that be nice? You ever see one of these? What? What? No. It's called a paper bag. Here, oh. let me show you something. Here, you want to hold this? Oh. What are you doing? You got this stuff all messed up. They were expensive too. Oh. Look at that. There, try that. One thing to carry. You like that? What, what do you call it? That's new. It's a paper. It's a paper bag. Wow, paper bag. Yeah. Wow. So you go grocery shopping, you put your stuff in. You know, it's pretty handy, isn't it? Very. Hi. Hi. I'd like to buy this lunch size paper bag, please. Okay. Down. 107, please. Two. 93. Have that in the bag, please? Sure. And your receipt. There you go. Thank you. You're welcome. Order one today. Don't get stuck. Stick it in a paper bag. Welcome to Lunatic Fringe, the show that's becoming a legend in its own mind. I'm David Ringo, producer, and you're in for a great show tonight. But first, a test from the emergency broadcast system. Take it away, guys. I'll be in my dressing room. Thanks, Mr. Ringo. Uh, I, I just hooked up this emergency broadcast scrambler here. As you know, it's a state law. We have to do this once a month here at the station. Dirk here's our maintenance man. Let her rip, Dirk. Uh, well, yeah, well, uh, I'm not precisely convinced as to which button I was directed to push here. It's, I uh, told you to press that one. This one, well, are you sure about that? Because earlier you mentioned that I should uh, depress this one here. No, no, but, I didn't. I told you to press that one right there. Well, according to the core, the uh, control panel here. Dirk, it, just press that button right there, that one. Uh, okay, here we go. Well, I, I suppose that is the one there. Yeah. It's, oh. it's a little loud. Let's see if we can't turn it down. Where's that uh, instruction manual I gave you? Instruction manual? Uh, I was never given an instruction manual. I, I guess I gave it to you. No. Oh, oh, great. Now you lost it. Uh, folks, uh, uh, this is only a test. Uh, only a test. Uh, uh, it is not, uh, I repeat, not a real emergency, mind you. Uh, if, if it were, of course, a real emergency, we would visually instruct you as to what to what to do and to where and you know and uh, so it's, 
so which course of action you would want to undertake and which station. So, so remember uh, that, yes, and so uh, this concludes uh, uh, this um, version of our monthly emergency broadcast uh, informing system. Uh, so, uh, that was pretty good, Dirk. No, yeah. no, turn it off. Uh, yeah, right. So I'll just push the same button here. But it, it, it's still not, it's not, it's just. Oh, great. Now you broke it. How about. We gotta get this thing out. Something's on. not. Uh oh. Oh no. I don't see anything under here. Oh, uh, this is getting to be a real emergency. Yeah. Uh, uh, folks, uh... <laughs> folks, follow, follow these instructions very carefully. Uh, stay in your homes, uh, lock your doors, and barricade your, uh, barricade your doors, and lock your windows very securely. That's step one. Now, and number two, two uh, is, is grab some bare essentials. Grab some food and, uh, food and water. And number three is go in your basement and Listen, lock the door behind you. Right. Number four is uh, is get in a crouching position because you got to watch out for falling debris. And number five is, is remain calm. Remain oh, calm, Dirk. I, I really, technical guy, I don't think going into your basement is a very good idea for these folks. Why not? Well, basements are breeding grounds for rock noise. Well, cut it out. Those disgusting old. <laughs> we got to get this <laughs> thing off. Oh. Yes, upstairs would be safer. Go, go up into the main a part of the house, uh, possibly even the attic. Oh, no, not the attic. The attic would not be good either because of those slimy creatures. So, go, stay upstairs. Oh, this is becoming a real tragedy. Yeah. Oh, what is going on here, guys? Oh, Mr. Ringo. Ringo look, uh, so we had this, uh, the, this, this scrambler. It, uh, uh, it, the, uh, the, the buttons are not, not functioning properly. Uh, oh yeah, this one. Oh, geez, sorry. This one particular Rico. switch here is. That's better. Now get this thing out of here. Okay. Sorry, Mr. Ringo. Oh, my love. Thank you, Carlos. Thanks. James, this is quite a fun restaurant you've chosen here. This is Thank wonderful. You. Very fun. Where have you heard about it before? A friend of mine, uh, Bill. It's beautiful. Told me about this. I'm excellent, so excellent. I'm so hungry. You smell the food, the aroma even mm. makes me smell great. The food. Is this Can't wait to order. Yes, it is. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Alfred. I'll be your waiter this evening. Um, would you like something before your meal? Perhaps some wine? Mm -hmm. We have it's a fine so wine list from our wine cellars. Um, may I suggest maybe a Chablis? Or a burgundy, and our house wine is also very excellent, house recommended, wine. very highly. House. house wine. Okay. How about I bring you a half a carafe? If you enjoy it, um, I'll bring you the rest of the bottle. Sounds quite fun. Alfred. Okay. Share these menus with your spouses or your dates there, and uh, I'll be back shortly. Thank you very much. Thank you. Mm, this looks so fun. Mm. Oh my goodness! I don't even know what these yeah, things are. Thing I do. Oh my! I can't even read that. I know. What should we get? Oh, this looks so excellent. I can't decide. This looks Maybe wonderful. Maybe we could get this dinner for two. Oh, yes. That would be so wonderful. Italian. So Seafood. glad we're here. Aren't you glad? I don't know if I'm going to I love this place. Yeah. This will be the next piece. Oh, this is so wonderful. Here's your wine, sir. Would you like to taste the wine? Oh, very good, my man. Let's see what you have here. The Shrimp Feliciano, madam, that is an excellent mm. choice. They take fresh Alaskan Bay shrimp and they take a garlic and butter ah. sauce with some baby chestnuts and they saute it and Delicious. they put a little burner under for you, keep it very warm for your tits. It is very excellent, very excellent. I'll take that. 
Good choice, my friend. Very good choice. choice. Make that too. Okay, sir, fine. And you, madame? I'll take the pasta Alfredo, Alfred. Okay, that is an excellent choice. Sir? My man, I'll have the steak. The steak. Very good. We have baby potatoes with that and a house salad. Any dressing that you prefer? I make a French dress. French. Okay, I will be back with you order momentarily. Make my steak well after. Menus? Mm, like this is wonderful. Yes, it is. Quite Mine is so delicious. Good. Oh, yeah. Did you taste it? I can't wait for the food. Oh, yes. Take off. I would like 
I, I'm sorry, I know you're giving excellent service. No sorry. problem. But before you leave, I would like to have this steak just a little more well done. I can see what you mean, sir. I'll take care of that for you. Well, thank you. What a nice Great waiter we have. You don't mind taking back for me. But that does look... Maybe let me pick my love. Hey, Pop. What? The guy out there says this ain't burnt enough. Are you kidding me? He's a jerk. I don't know what to tell you. What a scumbag. It ain't done enough. Yeah. What, not hot enough? Here! We'll make it hot for him! How's that? Uh, you want to try it? Well, will fix it, God. It's not fucking hot enough. I'm going to ugly, too. Yeah, I'll fix it. That's good. Good. Take that out, oh, too. Man, I love it, Pop. I love it. Where's the middle of that guy? I'm screaming. Here's your steak, sir. Oh, yeah. Sorry about that. I'm sure it'll be much more to your liking. Thank you very much, Alfred. I'm sure it will be. Mm. This looks delicious. Perfect. Hello. How are you? That's good. I'm Bobby Penn, and here's the news. Ah, uh, the National Enquirer broke an exclusive story this morning, which reveals that Iraqi leader Saddam Hussein is in fact Elvis Presley. CIA analysts have confirmed that photos of the rock and roll legend taken during, taken during the 1968 Las Vegas Comeback concert are anatomically identical to those run by CNN of the pesky Middle Eastern ruler. Elvis is speculated to have purchased to Iraq with profits gleaned from the sale of Graceland souvenirs. While the CIA refuses official comment, informed sources confirm that the August invasion of Kuwait is a direct result of the king's continued abuse of quaaludes and his compulsive need for attention. <laughs> Tabloids. Everyone already knows that Elvis is per currently working here at Lunatic French Studio. What else we got here? Elsewhere in the news, uh, ah, police are looking for information on a series of mail thefts in the Heighton Hill area. A man has been seen stealing mail from the boxes on the streets. The suspect has been described as a middle-aged man with black hair and a mustache. He was last seen wearing a blue coat and cap, both bearing an insignia which police have uh, surmised to be an emblem of some kind of organized crime syndicate. If you have seen this man or anything pertaining to the Eagle Mob, please get in touch with the authorities as soon as possible. Uh, on the eastbound 290, a tractor trailer transporting a load of lead hit a Yugo head on yesterday, sending it hurtling through the air until it splattered up against the sound barrier. The accident caused the highest the biggest car pileup in history, starting from Sheridan Drive, passing the 990, and going all the way to the Grand Island Bridges. On the scene now, we have Bill Ward, and he will fill us in on some more of the details of that horrible accident. Bill? You're supposed to point! Anyway, this is Bill Ward. Uh, we're here live at the scene of the accident that you probably, well, we're not, we're live here now, but we're not live at the scene because that was two days. Well, anyway, <clears throat> it was a hor It was horrible. The, there was a Yugo, and it ri bounced off this. It ricocheted off the uh, railing there. Well, it was the. It was all. The, well, they patched it up, and it bounced over. It hit a few cars, and then it finally ended up in this ditch after bouncing off the sound barrier. Can you see that white spot on the sound barrier? Well, and then that was, it was horrible. There was debris all over the place. It was, it was, it was disgusting. It, well, they, they cleaned it up very well. And, uh, <clears throat> oh, here's a paint chip from the Yugo. No, this is a sound, there's, this is a, a cigarette butt. Anyway, there was glass all over the place. And uh, the traffic was backed up from here. This is Sheridan, in between Sheridan and Maine. And it was backed up all the way to the Grand Island Bridge. It was the worst, worst traffic experience that Buffalo has ever experienced experienced it, it, like I say it was backed up all the way can can you picture can you picture it it was just backed up for miles well back to you Bobby 
Thank you, Bill. That was very enlightening, to say the least. Well, let's go to our current affairs commentary, which will be given by Tyler Tannerbottom. He's new at the station, fresh out of high broadcasting school. So let's give Tyler our undivided attention. Tyler? Hi, before I begin, I'd like to make one brief announcement. Announcement? I'd like to announce that this will be my last broadcast here. Your first? No, my last. I've just received word that I've contracted a deadly virus and I won't be expected to live for the rest of the program. Don't worry, it's, it's not contagious. Well, what are you doing here then? Why do you expect me to be? I don't know. Europe, Bermuda, Jamaica. I mean, if you're going to go, go in style. I can't disappoint my fans. Fans? You don't have any fans. You're just your first time on the air. You're a complete stranger to the viewing audience. Then I have nothing to live for. How convenient. No, no, you're just doing this to boost the ratings. I know those tricks. You don't believe me? Of course not. Now do your commentary. Oh, all right. Thank you, Tyler, for that report. Mm -hmm. Do you have the winter blues? Are you planning a vacation this year? Well, Chuck Rost, our correspondent in Florida, will tell you about the benefits of a Florida vacation this year. Chuck? Well, we made it to fabulous Florida. We're just here enjoying the sun, just soaking it up here at Daytona Beach. You know, that's one thing we love about Florida. The untouched natural beaches, miles and miles of them. It's really so great. And, and uh, I, I want you to notice, if, if you would, if I put my feet just like this, and if I make sure that my arm is over here, I can really kind of feel the sun's rays, you know? Uh, it's really great. That certainly is good to hear, Chuck. Tell us, what did you find when you arrived there in the sunshine state of Florida? Miles and miles of, un, of natural beaches. It's really fabulous, you know? Fantastic. And, and it's, you have a whole place to yourself, kind of, you know? It's really great. You have to be careful, though, because there is a little traffic. And sometimes you have to dodge the traffic much there. We'll get to the water, but it's... It's really great. Hey, come on. Hey. We're going to find some beautiful women and photograph them for you. You'll love it. There's beautiful women all over. Um, what? You got to go to the bathroom? OK, well, well, we'll find the women in a few minutes. I have to take my son to the bathroom. The only problem, of course, is finding the bathrooms because there aren't very many around uh, bathrooms, and I haven't gone myself, actually, for two days. I've been holding it until we found a nice bathroom. I see. Well, that's probably because you've been eating that fine Floridian food, right? I see there's a restaurant right there. And I'm Chuck. Hi, Chuck. Hey, Chuck. How are you? Good. People are really friendly here in Daytona, too. they real friendly. Here's some of those uh, girls I was telling you about. Uh-huh. Tell us, Chuck, is your family enjoying the vacation? How do you like Daytona? Great. Think it's fun? Nice and peaceful and quiet on the beach. There's a few girls that I had I had helped them fix their air mattress, and uh, they were real nice. Let me fix their air mattress for them. Well, thank you, Chuck. For those of you who are still deciding whether they should go down to Florida, I'm sure Chuck helped you to uh, make up your mind. That's all the news now. 
There'll be more news later on this IBC station. This is Bobby Penn, signing off. Get it!